Hi, this is Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts, here with a story from Jackie. It's a true story of two relatives of hers who also got involved with the Ouija board and the demonic encounters they they <laughs> yeah they had to deal with as a result. I'm telling you, it's, it's no game. It's very dangerous. Listen to this. Hi, Sister Pat. Yes, I would like to share with you the reality of my father and my uncle. They began messing with the Ouija board a couple of times throughout their teens, trying to contact their dead grandma, which they thought was their grandma. They didn't realize it was a demon. A lot of weird things began to happen to them. Sometimes my dad would feel demons holding him down on the bed. He couldn't scream, couldn't even move at all. My uncle, he would see demons up close, face to face, and dark shadows passing throughout the house. It followed them as they became men. My parents married, uh, my parents married, I mean, my father uh, married my mom. They became, uh, my mom became a Christian. Okay. She was Holy Spirit filled. But my dad, he struggled with these entities for years. I remember hearing my mom during the night rebuking demons. <laughs> they were attacking my father. They were trying to cook, cook him. What were they doing? I'm trying to make sure I read this right. They were trying to shock him. It would happen so often. One day my dad punched a big dresser mirror. <laughs> He punched the mirror that we had because he saw demons laughing at him while he was trying to argue with my mom. My mom, my two brothers, my sister, and I are Christians, but my dad hated it. So it was a struggle. I myself was smacked so hard in the face. Check this out. I'll read that again. Listen, this was not her father. It wasn't her mother. I'm reading this one again. I myself was smacked so hard in the face as a child while laying on my bed by an entity. And my sister also saw demons trying to attack my dad. Plus, the building we lived in had five families on the same floor that practiced Santeria devil worshiping. So imagine, we had to be praying all the time. My mom dragged us to church all the time, too. So many things happened that I wouldn't finish typing. I cried because on December 15th, God answered our prayers. My dad gave his life to God got baptized, and was filled with the Holy Ghost, and now serves the Lord. My uncle also gave his life to God because before, right before he passed away. People think this Ouija board is just for entertainment until weird things start to happen. <sighs> Once you open that door to evil, it's hard to close that door. I knew never to play. I knew never to play with that. I warned others too. God bless you, Sister Pat. God bless all you guys as you hear this. You should never touch that Ouija board. This is Pat's two cents now. Thank you, Jackie. Now listen to this. I saw a movie where this young girl was in a classroom with her running buddy. They kept it a minute, a minute, um, they kept it a mystery until the end of the movie. And I'm not going to tell you the name of it so that you, you know, will see it without the end spoiling it for you. But there was a key through the whole movie, a central theme. And the central theme was you left the door open. Now, listen to this.
she was attending school. Running Buddy was hanging tight. The way he kept staring at her. Hey, I thought he had a crush on the girl. But you find out who he was at the end. But here was a trip. There was another guy involved that came into the movie after she was coerced, I mean literally coerced, just to get them off her back to play with their Ouija board with them. A bunch of girls wanted her to come play in the dorm room with them, the, 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 the Ouija board. She was a Christian. She touched that thing one time. Her window, the wind blew in her window and her door flew open. The, it, the movie was so symbolic, so symbolic. She had opened doors to the demonic she had no idea of. She didn't even know it was happening. She would come to her bedroom after locking it when she left, wondering why it was open. And this guy started liking her, the one that showed up after she played with the Ouija board. He started liking her. And he so reminded me of abusive men. They get domineering and possessive and and, and and they're around you all the time. They don't want to give you any room to breathe. They're smothering. And then next thing you know, they start treating you like you are their, their possession. And, and I mean, they get real ugly, real violent, real ugly. You know, when you act like you have something else you want to do. But anyway, and that's the way he started to act. And she would come to her dorm. And find her bedroom wide open, wondering, well, how did the door get open? And he's in there sitting on her bed. And it didn't dawn on her. She didn't discern this. She was too busy being fickle and silly. And, um, you know, she, how did you, you know, what are you doing in my room? That was the biggest red flag right there. I would have cut that sucker loose so fast and gotten prayer to get him out of my life. But she didn't know she had opened that door. She would have had to have taken responsibility to close it, but she didn't know. And this guy got worse and worse to the point where he threatened her life. And when he got ready to threaten her life, all of a sudden, an angel showed up. Thank God. Somebody was playing for, praying for girlfriend because an angel showed up and got rid of that demon. And told her what she had to do to keep the door closed. To close it again and keep it closed. You guys need to stop playing with this stuff. Some of you parents, you let your kids watch these, these demonic cartoons. And play these demonic games. I mean, I don't get why you think that's harmless. I really don't get that. Demons are real. The devil is real. Hell is real. And you know doggone well God is because he created all of this. God is real. And I have been attacked by enough demons to know that all I have to do is either use the name of Jesus, rebuking them like I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I command you to leave me. Leave me alone. In the name of Jesus and never return, never attack me like that again. I mean, I put all that in there to make sure there's no instant replay. Okay, number two, the other weapon is the word of God. That's what Jesus used. He quoted the word of God to the devil. Number three, the Lord showed me in one of my recent dreams before my husband passed away where I battled a demon that would not leave my house when I rebuked her in the name of Jesus. And I'm thinking, well, you know, I know there's no sin in my life. What's going on? You know, I mean, no practicing sin. We got, you know, sin of attitude and everything. Just that's why we have to ask God to forgive us on a daily basis, because you never know, you know, what you may have thought that God might not be happy with. But in this case, I was not practicing a sinful life. And I couldn't figure out why... I couldn't get rid of this. This was the first time I told a demon to leave in the name of Jesus and he wouldn't go. It was actually in female form this time. And she was very belligerent. 
And she looked at me, I'll leave when I get good and ready to leave. And I looked at her and I said, oh, really? And it was like all of a sudden the Lord put this instinct in me to start praising him. And as soon as I started praising him, the room, the living room filled with this wind. I mean, this wind was whipping and blowing and, and roaring and whistling. It, I mean, it was, it almost sounded to me like what I've heard on TV, the way a tornado sounds. I mean, it was that strong, that powerful. But nothing in my room was moving. I'm praising God that much more now. And now, as I'm praising God that much more, she's covering her ears, telling me to stop it. And my feet leave the ground. They leave the ground. And I'm hovering up in midair with my arms spread out on my side, praising and glorifying God at the top of my lungs. I got louder and louder just to spite her. Yeah. And I felt, listen, I felt the living room filled with angels. I felt the reinforcements from heaven. I knew I had a whole slew of folks up in there with me. I knew those angels were battling big time with me. And I lowered myself on the ground. It's like I willed it. I lowered myself back on the ground, walked over to her, and she tried to get out the door, and I stopped her. And I said, no, you want to play? Yeah, we're going to play this. And you never come back to this house ever again. And I held her by the shoulders and hollered. Now, one thing about demons, in dreams or in reality, no human being can overpower a demon. I'm just thinking about this now. I have never been able to overpower a demon through human strength. That's why I knew that this was anointed reinforcement because I overpowered her and I kept her by the shoulders and hollered in her face like that. I'm hollering in her face, praise God, glory to God. I mean, I was letting her have it. I felt like my praise to God was total torment and torture to this demon. She was writhing. She was trying to put her hands up. And I had her, she was trying to break loose to run out of my house. And I said, now, you said you'll be leaving when you get good and ready? No, you leave when I get good and ready. When I tell you to leave, that's when you're going to leave. But right now, you're going to hear some praises. And I praise God and praise God. And when I got through and I felt like, okay, I've tortured her enough, I told her, now, you leave and don't you ever try to come back or bring anything else with you. Don't you ever, I don't ever want to see you again. You get out of my house, get off my property. In the name of Jesus. That battle was won. Demons are real. Now they're going to attack you for two reasons. One, you're dabbling with witchcraft, the occult, the you know, spiritual darkness, you're playing with, with Ouija boards, you're playing with tarot cards, with psychic hotlines, you're playing with all that nonsense, or you're in the new wave movement, and people who really get knee deep into it start realizing that those demons that they thought were their friends start turning on them, and they can't cut loose, and those demons start beating them and doing everything crazy to them. And then they try to get deliverance and, you know, and think, well, maybe this God thing just might, might really be something to it. And they find out it is and they get saved. And that's the only way they'll get free. One woman said her mother killed herself because the churches that she went to could not help her. I'm not even going to go there. But listen to this, you guys. You have got to stop. Oh, I didn't say the second reason. The second reason demons attack you is because you are about your father's business and you are all about ministry and they don't want you to accomplish what you're going to do in ministry. Those are the two main reasons people get under that kind of attack. I have had a demon hold my face down and 
hold my mouth and try to smother my nose and clamp my lips so I couldn't talk. And as I mumbled, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I heard. I couldn't say it clearly. My mouth sounded like this to me. That's how it was because the hand was over my mouth and my nose. But I heard in my ear a, a concert of whispers saying, they were all saying it in sync with each other. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And I'm sitting up here saying, something saying it with me. There are reinforcements when you're on God's side. When you're playing and dabbling and you're not on God's side, you're on the devil's turf then, baby. You have no recourse but to be its victim. Cut that crap loose. Cut it loose. Because listen to this. This is what Teresa said, the former witch. She said, some of you are allowing stuff in your house, in your life. And it's affecting your kids. Some of you have kids that die early from horrible diseases because of you and what you're opening the door to. Some of you are allowing your kids to play with the dark side, the, the, I mean, all this crap, and they open doors. But if you had taken more responsibility and gotten rid of everything that had to do with the occult, that had to do with curses, that had to do with hexes, spells, divinations, incantations, oh, oh, come on, yoga. One demon told somebody, yoga is one of their venues. They, that's an open door for them. Even the stretching and all of that has to do with inviting demonic forces. I'm telling you, you better leave a lot of that stuff alone. You think that it's harmless. Oh, yeah, you wave your hand all you want. But this is the last, these are the last days and things are getting intense and demons are going to start coming out the woodwork. Mark my words. CERN and all that other crap these people are playing with. Mark my words, demons are going to start coming out with a vengeance and y'all better be together because if you don't have it together and you're not on the right side, baby, they're going to suck the very life out of you and or your kids. I'm done warning you. I, I've beaten this, this dead horse and I, I, you guys would rather watch TV than hear these videos. You would rather go hang out with your buddies and play play bid whist and, and, and bones and all those other games that you like to play rather than get or get on Facebook with all your selfies and narcissistic uh, photographs. You rather do that and play and be entertained, be dummy down than to get down and serious. This stuff is serious. The Antichrist, the beast, all of that's getting ready to manifest. And you playing, pussyfooting around and, and playing tiddlywinks. You better say a prayer. You better ask the Lord to come into your heart. You better denounce everything that you've ever done, that you think you've done, that it had to do with the dark side and anything in your family that's been done so that all curses will be wiped away clean out of your life. God bless you as you do so. And if you don't, God have mercy on your behinds because you're going to need it. You're going to need it. Amen.